You've got questions, and we've got answers. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> okay. so, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. What's the line? I can't deal with this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't deal with this. We've been getting tons of emails on the website and asking lots of really good questions, but a lot of the questions tend tend to go around the same topics, the same questions. So we thought we'd take a little time and try to get through as many as we can in the next like eight minutes or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, some of the popular questions that get asked are, "How did you go blind?" Um, it was really slow and then really fast. Like when I, when I first lost my eyesight. Um, well, I. I it, it, the big reason was because of the epilepsy. I had epilepsy from the time I was two years old, developed into severe epilepsy. Then I ended up getting Lyme's disease later on, and the Lyme's disease was undiagnosed, so it ended up causing some nerve, nerve damage and problems. Then when it was diagnosed, we, the, the treatment that we went for it, and the treatment for the, for the epilepsy, um, they were just trying to get that under control because I was having some crazy seizures, just the two combined. And I ended up, um, Part of the treatment, part of it, all that together, I ended up having some crazy seizures going into status epilepticus, which is a seizure that you don't come out of. And my heart would stop, my breathing would stop, and that's not good for your brain, and end up losing about 40% of my hearing and the vision. Um, but I have hearing aids for the for the hearing, so you know that's not really a problem. And Jack, not that he hears me. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> what do you know? But, but Jack, though, says I, I have wrote robot ears quite quite often because I you know I can turn them up and I can hear different things so mm -hmm. that's good but for the for the vision though there's not really much that they could do but that's kind of how it did and it was really slow like the vision was going to have a seizure and it would be blurry and then finally when I started going to that status epilepticus and those crazy mad seizures it just it went really quick like within a period of a few months it went from like twice over the limit for for blindness to the the point where they couldn't measure the vision at all anymore yeah. Um, so oh, oh, I should say though, and I'm sorry. Um, if you notice that somebody that has epilepsy, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, yeah. that's a very kind of lightning strike sort of thing. It's not something you have to worry about. Yeah. Um, so another question that that you get asked a lot is, um, how do you paint? Um, same way that I get around with Echo, my guide dog, or a cane, and um, it, it's it's using physical landmarks so that if I'm traveling down a road, uh, you know, I'm looking for fire hydrants, trees. Um, all these different things that they don't move around so you can feel them and you know where they are. If you're in the corner in a city, you know exactly where you are in that city. There's only one corner like that. And it's the same way in, in the artwork. Whenever I draw, I draw using lines that are raised. And it's the same way that a sighted artist would do it. But if a sighted artist was making a line, he would check the line with it, their eyes and decide if it was a good line, if they liked it or not. With me, I make a line that I can feel, a tactile raised line. And if I want to see if it's good or not, I touch it. Because, of course, the sighted artist uses their eyes for everything. I use my hands for everything. And it's just a way of being able to navigate a canvas in the same way that I would navigate a street. So then how do you tell the difference between colors? Colors are actually easy. And some, sometimes people get it confused and they think that I can just tell what a color is by touching it. And I can, but it's paints that I, I, I have already like changed. So, like, um, But I, I have a couple of paints here. This is red because it says red. I'm a very lazy brother. So I just put an R on there, <laughs> you know, why braille it off, you don't need it, so. Um, but that, you know, that's red, I can read it. The, the, this is white, and it's a, you know, it's just a white too. But I, I can, you know, I can read it's white. Just like if you're sighted, you're going to read the label. I read the label with my hands. But when it comes to mixing the paint, the way to tell the, the value of it, like if you want to make it the light, change the lightness or darkness, or if you want to mix colors together, I actually change the way the paint feels. So if I was going for a gray between black and white, then I would start with a white that I would mix up to make really thick, kind of like toothpaste, and a black really runny that I would mix so it was runny, so it was more like oil. So those two colors are very different. You've got one that's crazy thick, one that's really runny. If you want a texture between the two, that color right between, you just mix for the texture that's right there in between the two. And it's a really precise way of mixing color. You have over 200 touch receptors on the pad of each finger. It, you know, you can really get, you make it accurate. And also with color, you know, like for, let's say like blue, there may be a million different shades of blue, but if you're working in one painting, there might only be three shades of blue that you're going to work with. So out of those three, there's one that's going to be the darkest, one that's going to be the lightest, and then one that's going to fall in between. So changing the texture just gives you a way to differentiate the different colors. Yeah. 
And it, it may sound hard, but it's actually a lot of fun. I don't know, because you get to get, you get to get your hands in it, you get to get messy, so, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's good. I'm definitely yeah. messy. Mm. He'll come out of the studio and he's usually got paint all over his face. And sometimes I'll tell him, sometimes I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I always try to get cleaned up before I walk down and get Jack, though, because I don't want to be that dad that's just like, oh, there he comes. So, <laughs> man. But I'm usually that guy. <laughs> yeah. So what are you going to do? Well, that might have taken up our eight minutes for questions. Oh, you think? I don't know. Is there, is there another question? Um, well, does somebody help you? Oh, um, you know, no, and, and really the, 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 the process is that um, whenever, whenever, whenever I started painting, I, you know, I, I, I paint for myself, and so the, the whole idea of painting, of any sort of artistic thing, is that it's about growth, it's about creation, so the more of yourself you put in it, the more that you get out. My son does help, though, whenever we go to the art store, and... I'll, you know, I'll ask, to get, I'll ask to get, you know, the, like maybe a cerulean blue, a, a different kind of red, a yellow. When we get back, I've got like this red, yellow, and blue, and all the tubes feel the same. So I'll ask Jack, hey, which, which one's the yellow? And he'll tell me, I know, oh, this is the lemon yellow. It's all brilliant, which is a big help, which is fun. So it's nice to get him involved with that. But, <laughs> and, um, well, and you also use them to, in the studio when he finishes a painting and... Just a sort of check. You'll ask him, yeah. what, what what's in this painting, just to make sure that you yeah, and it's funny it correctly. I, I, I don't I don't do that with too many people, but with Jackson, like I'm working on a drummer right now, and I want to be very loose, like somebody to get the idea of a drummer, but I don't want one more line than I need to to be able to convey that it's a drummer. So you know, I was asking Jack, like, hey, what do you see there? What do you see? <laughs> you know, and the lady was like, I have no idea, and I'm like, well, okay. You know, so I work a little. Like, what do you see? And it's like, oh, it's a drummer. I'm like, okay, good. So, then start adding in mad color and stuff. So it, it's cool, but he has this really good eye for abstract. You know, he's seven years old, but I don't know where he gets that from. I guess you. Oh, I mean, you know, the artiste. Yeah, but gosh. It was like the, the new descending. I'm the uh, brains. Yeah, yeah well, the, 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 no, no, no argument there. Um, I just broke this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Can't believe it in that. But, no, um,. But you know, like you, you know that what, what, what's that artist? I can't believe I can't remember. But the nude descending a staircase, oh, or a woman that. descending a staircase. I'm, it's nude descending a staircase. Yeah, it, yeah, I love it's, that. It's, um, we saw him with Guggenheim. Uh, oh, I can't fuck. think. It's just names. Oh, it'll it'll, it'll hit me as soon as soon as we turn off the camera. But like he saw it, and he was like, "Oh, look, there's a woman walking down the staircase." You know, and most people look at that, and it's just like a riot of yeah. color. And I think, wow, yeah. he did that. Yeah. It was like three or something, or four. Yeah, he's got the eye. I tell you, something. <laughs> Well, it's cool. Well, you know, we should come back and do more questions um, in later videos. So be sure and uh, tune in. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing about how to paint. I want, I want to do a video showing it all. You know, the, the, yeah, the it, process. It down the process. And also, if a person wants to to start a workshop, like you, a teacher, and you want to do it in your classroom, what 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 do you need to be able to do like a blindfold painting to be able to show people to use courage. all of your senses and our yeah courage. That's what we're doing. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. yeah. So you. tune in. We'll make more. Thanks to Brooke for being the camera lady, by the way. <laughs> that's our intro. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> um, um, this is John Bramlett. I'm Jackie Siri. We're going to do some videos here. We're going to ask John some questions. It's going to be great. I'm going to drop some knowledge in y'all. going to drop some knowledge. <laughs> Get ready for some Just keep it all serious. We're going to drop some knowledge. <laughs> No, oh, wait, wait. This is John Bramlett, and we're going to drop some knowledge. There, Pre just like that. Prepare yourself. <laughs> oh, I like all that. The intro is way more fun when you have, you know, I know. some drinks. That's why usually the intros are usually more high energy, because you're... No, you do one. I already did, like, oh. three. Oh, well, I was a part of that. I like that. I was, I was a part of that. I was a part of that. I was, a, I was, I was like, there. Yeah, I, was like, I witnessed it all. Mm. You've got questions? We've got answers. Knowledge being dropped. <laughs> Knowledge <laughs> after school special. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is not your everyday after school special. <laughs> I'm going to drop some knowledge. Nice.